Hi guys, and welcome to my latest, um, well, it's kind of a let's play. Um, this is a game that I've made using RPG Maker VX, as you can see here. It's called T-Maze, it's a working project. Welcome to T-Maze, find the stairs to reach the next level. So basically, it's um, an arcade type game. It says avoid enemies and traps, push blocks and press switches to access new areas. Beware of the time limit. Good luck. Well, cur currently, there isn't actually a time limit. It's um, still a work in progress. But basically, you move around with the arrow keys and you collect treasure. And here you have to. Uh, this is the first floor. Basically, it's like a large tower. And you have to work your way up the tower through the different levels to get to the next room. Uh, so that was the first floor. And I'm these little yellow piles of what looks to be vomit is actually uh, gold, piles of gold, gold coins. And you can collect those and um, you can purchase uh, health for your character. Your health doesn't actually show up on the screen. Uh, you have to go to your menu by pressing the X and you can see Ralph. He's the default um, character that you start with, but he's uh, he's got 10 HP in total, and I've taken one hit from the spikes, so uh, I've actually gone down to nine health. So you have to keep an eye on your health. Cause certain enemies take away more than one hit. So as you can see, you get knocked back from the spikes, and it's uh, it's it's quite good. Um, you can actually ooh, see look, oh, I'm taking more damage here, oh, I'm down to six health. Um, you can actually get across those spikes in one if you if you're uh, nimble enough. So yeah, I'll pitch you make a VX. I'm mad about it is just this program um, from a company called Enterbrain, and you can create your own role-playing games essentially. And, uh, they could be anything really, like from um, Traditional font fantasy to you know, or to this basically. You know, if you want to create an arcade type game, then you know you can do that. You can, you're, you're really you're only limited to your imagination. I mean, I guess um, your technical skills are limited. Uh, you know, if you if you don't bother to try and learn everything that you can do in the game or in the creator, then you know, you're not going to be able to make that much complicated stuff. You see, I passed those two spikes there in one trip. Oh, damn. I'm going to die. I have got a small key. Um, you can see that door down the bottom there. Uh, you can open that with a key, but I've decided to save it and go the more difficult way around past the spikes here. Because uh, if you save your key, then later on you might find an extra door with some more treasure that you can get to. Uh, so yeah, this is basically a checkpoint area. We've done a few floors, and if you go up to the crystal here, it's a save crystal, and you can save. And this is like the shopkeeper. What are you buying? Uh, got that from uh, Resident Evil 4. So I'm going to buy uh, a couple of potions here. I can afford three, but I'm only going to get two for now because uh, something better might come up later. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the next floor. Alright, so now the difficulty ramps up quite a bit here. You have to really time it well because these are going, as you can see, there is on a, a loop. And if you don't move quick enough, then you will get trapped and you, you get set on fire. Uh, you know, nothing really happens if you get here, you just get knocked back and hurt, like the spikes really, but these deal I think two damage, where the spikes only de deal one damage. Ooh, let's see. Oh, I'm dead, I forgot to use a potion. Oh, what a noob. Alright, so, it's okay though, we saved not too long ago, so we just continue. And it's really cool, because the graphics just... Oh man, I love the graphics and you can create your own in Photoshop and export, uh, import them into the game. And you know, so you you can like you can design anything you want. If you want, you know, some D 
different wall textures, then you can just make them yourself and then uh, bring them into the game. And there's quite a large community of people out there that play this, or create their own games and share them online. Ah, see, this is a bit more tricky because I've got to wait for the, the opportune moment where the spikes disappear and I don't get hit by the thing. See, now I've got this extra key. I could have used it down the bottom on the first floor, but I'm going to use it here and then collect the last amount of treasure. And the music as well is just amazing. Like, um, you know, you can import your own music not just limited to what the creators gave you. So what you're seeing here really is just a very uh, basic uh, design of a game, but I think it's not too bad. Here you have to be careful with the rolling balls. You can see the uh, broken concrete areas where the, the boulders have hit before they roll down. sensitive using the arrow keys. I think I'd prefer to actually have a controller plugged in and, and play it that way, but I don't know. Or use your luck there. Okay, so I think we might just finish this floor and call it a video. I've got um, other RPG games that I'm actually working on as well. I think what a lot of people do in this community, I mean, because it's because you're working on your own, it's quite hard, well, I find it quite hard to pin down uh, what I want to do and work on one, making one game at a time. I tend to have all these different ideas and it's all bounce around my head and I have to get them out. And so I end up making like five different games at once or something. Uh, it's not always good because you know you can put myself down one out now, so I'm gonna use a potion. I think they are a cup five, so I'm not gonna really use uh, the next one until I big here again. Yeah, I like I love the, the old school graphics like this. They remind me so much of um, like the old SNES games like uh, Final Fantasy and uh, one of my favourite SNES games of all time is The Legend of Zelda and Link to the Past and I think actually the Zelda games in general really inspire me when I come to make my dungeons in these games. Because it made, you know, I think about all the different traps and the different things that you can do. The different puzzles. You know, because you can have switches, and you can have like rolling boulders like we've got here, hidden treasures, hidden doorways, whatever you really want, whatever you can think of. Alright, so the next one. Alright, so this is where it starts to get a bit tricky. We'll go to the next floor. I'm going to wait for the boulders to come back. Because the boulders are sort of on an, an animation loop and they go from the top to the bottom. Whoa! You've got to take your time. Even though the boulder's going to be coming back down behind you, there's plenty of time there. And we use a small key. And it's also a treasure chest. 500 gold. ka -ching! Right, so here's a little boulder puzzle actually. Um, basically, the trick is push the boulders a certain way to get the treasures. Uh, you 
I think there's a way to get all of the treasure in one go. Like, see if you if you push that first boulder all the way up this one here, um, then you uh, you wouldn't have been able. You would have had to go a different way, and some of the treasures wouldn't be quite as available as they are. I think that treasure chest down the bottom, there's only one way to get that. Um, I, can't, I can't actually remember how to get it. I think, oh yeah, I don't know. Yes, yeah, I shouldn't have pushed this bottle up. I'm going to have to go uh, back down to the next floor so that the boulders respawn. Because if you exit them, the boulders will sort of come back to their original position. Whoa, risking it for a biscuit. The boulder's going to be coming. Oh no! Well, oh, that was interesting. I didn't expect it to take me all the way back here. I was hoping I could go get another potion. I've only got one more health and I'm going to die. I'm going to try and make it through. I'll wait here for the next boulder. It's quite tough actually. I think perhaps the difficulty is a little bit too harsh for the first few of the floors of the game. I should have perhaps made, uh, give you a bit more health or made the potions a bit stronger or something. Okay, so yeah, you can see that the uh, boulders have repositioned themselves. So now if you push this all the way up the top, and then you push this one down, then you can access the door and get to the next floor. But if you go down, then you can push this one down, and then you can get this treasure chest, which you couldn't have got before. And to uh, risk having to go back down to the next floor, like I did, you know, to reset the boulders. Again, here's another thing. Which which boulders do you push? Do you sacrifice treasure for the thing? See if you push this, it goes to the gold, so you can't you can't actually get it. So you have to think of the best way to push the blocks of the boulders. So if some treasure you have to sacrifice. So yeah, it's quite good. You have to stop and think about which ways you're going to push the boulders to be able to get through the level. You see I've already done this wrong because I shouldn't have pushed this one. Because you can't none of these boulders, if you push any of these boulders down, you're not going to be able to push them sideways. But this one was here originally. And if you want to get to the stairs down the bottom, you've got to push this one to the side. So uh, alright. Uh, I made this quite a while ago actually, so it's not surprising that I've forgotten all, all my own puzzles. You see, you push this down, you can't get past. But I've got a key, so I'm going to open this, see what's in here, hopefully there's a potion. Ah, oh, life up, excellent. So this increases my maximum health to 20. So there you go. That's why it's worth saving your keys if you can. Uh, I'm just going to nip down the floor and then nip back up. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit broken in that way that you can just change, uh, you know, you can change where you are to, uh, you know, if, say I want that bit of gold there, I can just go back down the stairs and come back up because it, the uh, boulders will spawn. Uh, there are glitches like this boulder here, it can't actually be pushed into that space behind it, I don't know why. I've still got to work a lot of the bugs out. And the doors re relock themselves after you leave the room and re enter. But that's just one of those things you've got to fix with time, I guess. Oh, locked. I don't have a key for that one. See, there might have been something really cool in that chest, but. I think you can purchase keys later on actually, from what I remember. Ok, 
Okay, so now I, I want to. I'm gonna have to push this and sacrifice this bit of gold. Pick these bits of gold up, and then if I push this boulder across. No, I've made a mistake there as well. Oh, damn, I'll put it back down. Will I go back down? Let's see. No, 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 I should actually go down. If I can push this. Ah, oh, no, it's glitching as well. Alright, so I actually stuck myself a little bit because if this boulder could move to the left, we can move this one below to the right. But because of that glitch, I can't get past it. So I'm just going to have to use a little shortcut here. If you hold down the control key, you can walk through walls. It's only for the debug mode. It's not actually for the actual game itself. So if you was playing this when the game was fully released, then you wouldn't be able to do cheat like that. All right, so um, I'm just going to stop the recording here and we can carry on in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.